Hi there and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Christina and today's video is going to be a little bit different than my normal videos. I tend to talk more about fashion and home decor, home renovations. But in my last video, I talked a little bit about finances and it kind of got me thinking the past couple days about doing a video on that. And so I thought this would be a great video starting out the new year. And you can see by the title, this is about tips to help you save money in 2022 and of course the rest of your life. And I hope this video is helpful and inspiring and I hope that it's different than other videos of this type. I've seen videos that are about saving money and a lot of times they're like a list of things not to buy. Like don't go to Starbucks, don't spend money on clothes. And I want this video to be different than those. I don't wanna just give you a list of things that you should not buy because I don't think that that's actually helpful. Everyone lives differently. I wanna present different ways of thinking about money that will help anyone, no matter their circumstance or the way they live, to save money. Okay, so tip number one is, and this is the hardest one for me, is to know where your money's going, AKA budget. And this was especially hard in our poor years when we were students and my husband was in law school because we basically had no money. And let me just tell you, when you budget and you have no money coming in and all you have are outgoings, those are sad budget meetings with you and your partner. Our budget meetings were hard because we had very little. But probably even most important, if your money is tight, it shows how much more important it is to budget, even though those are uncomfortable. Where now we're a bit more comfortable and it's easier to talk about budget, but we only got here because we had those more difficult budget meetings. And it's important that you and your partner, if you have one that are on the same page, and if you are single or you are just starting out in life, budget, make a budget and stick to it. And back in those early budget meetings when we had more outgoing than inco ingoing, I remember we specifically said, do not spend money unless you absolutely have to. And that was like food, rent, the things that we like needed to have. You know we can't afford the fun pack. Basically, and I think everyone knows that budgeting is important. What's harder is actually doing it. And I think oftentimes we think, oh, if we just made more money, we, if we, we don't have to budget and it'll be easier. Oh, if we make more money, then we won't have these money problems. But if you haven't learned to budget what you have coming in, it won't matter how much money you make because somehow that money will find its way out of your wallet and your bank account. So knowing where your money's going, having control of your money and you telling your money where it's going to go and where it's going to serve you is how you'll succeed, not making more money. So that's tip number one budget and know where your money's going. Okay, tip number two, and this might not be shocking, but I do think it's still, people still love to debate it, but that is avoid debt and most specifically consumer debt. And I think people often fall into, it's really a trick when companies say, oh, 0% down or zero interest for 24 months. I even heard one on the radio for like 54 months from now. And you think, well, why wouldn't I do this? And I think, people need to understand that these companies want to make money and they are making money. So someone is paying for that and it might not be for five years, but someone is really gonna be paying a lot of money. And understanding that nothing is free. These companies are not just being nice to you because they want you to have this item. They want you to purchase, they want you to think it's a good deal. And I'm sure there are people that are lucky that get to you know have that item first and then pay for it later and luck out, but the vast majority of people are the ones that the company is making money on. Because at the end of the day, companies are making money and someone's paying for it. And so I just think it's safest to avoid the debt. And if you've been living under a rock, you might not have heard of Dave Ramsey, but he has several best-selling books, a podcast, a YouTube channel. I'll definitely link a lot of his things below. In our family, we love Dave Ramsey. And while we don't follow everything he says 100%, we are completely on board with his get out of debt and stay out of debt. And well, avoid debt, get out of debt, if you are in it, and then stay out of it for the rest of your life. And Dave Ramsey gets a lot of criticism from the finance community because they're like, you can make so much more money. And Dave Ramsey's mindset is, it's not about the numbers, it's about your behavior. So while if your interest for one thing is lower and this one is higher, you might be able to, you know, 
outmaneuver those numbers and make more money doing something a certain way while staying in debt. And Dave likes to teach you financial peace. What he means by that is that you will have peace of mind, that you will be able to go to bed every night knowing that you don't owe anyone money. And the only debt he is comfortable with is a conservative mortgage for a home. And other than that, it's no debt. And there might be ways to get rich quicker, but, but that has its risks. So Dave's mentality is to avoid debt at all costs. And you will get wealthy over time, but it's not a rich quick. It's a slow, you know, day by day effort of building wealth. Definitely check out his book, The Total Money Makeover. If you haven't read that, it's a great read, really easy, and you'll be motivated to get rid of the debt. So if you already are in debt, you can get out of it. Don't be overwhelmed. You, you know, what's the way to eat an elephant is one bite at a time. You know, you can do it. And if you need inspiration on how to get out of debt, definitely check out his podcast and that book because you will be fired up to get rid of your debt. Okay, number three. This one is the old adage of don't keep up with the Joneses. What the Joneses down the street are doing does not influence you and your finances. Don't worry about what they're doing. Don't sit and think, oh, I wanna live like them or have their home. At the end of the day, you don't know their finances probably. They could be doing amazingly. Mr. Jones could make four times what you make. And if he's making four times what you make, he can buy that more expensive car that you're sitting there thinking, I want that car when Mr. Jones can afford it and you might not be able to. There also is the opposite where maybe Mr. Jones is in huge amounts of debt and is he's very over leveraged and is living in a dangerous way. So at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what the Joneses do, sort of put on blinders. And I think you can definitely be inspired by other people. I mean, I've seen people in my own life who are working really hard or they start their own business or they pay off their home. And so I'm not saying never look at other people and what they're doing. You can definitely learn by their examples, but I would say focus more on their hard work and their sacrifice rather than what purchases that they are making or what places they're traveling to because your life isn't their life. And so I would say if you start feeling yourself feeling jealous or overly curious about the neighbors or people on social media, it's probably more people on social media, what they're doing doesn't concern you. So keep your head down, get out of debt, do a budget and focus on what you can do in your life, not what other people are doing in their lives. And I also think you'll have a lot more peace of mind and, and less anxiety. I think sometimes we look too much at other people's lives. We sort of think we don't have anything or we're not happy with our own lives. When if we didn't even look at their life, we would be happy with our circumstance. So be happy for the Joneses and be happy with your life. Okay, number four, and I kind of touched on this, and that is if you find yourself overspending on things that you don't really need, or wanting to spend things on things that you don't really need, take a social media break. And this one really helps me. I find that when I'm watching a lot of YouTube or being on Instagram, I also find myself making lists of things I wanna buy from Reformation and Aritzia and Restoration Hardware, all the places I like to shop. And I find myself, and these are things that I never would have known existed that I did not need that all of a sudden I feel like I need. So if you find yourself feeling triggered or wanting to purchase things from social media, get off, take a day off, a week off, a month off, and sort of reset and recharge and realize I have a closet full of beautiful clothes that I've already bought from being on social media too much. I don't need to keep going on. You know, I have more clothes than I have time to wear. Sometimes that reset helps you like snap back into reality that you probably don't need any of those things you wanted to buy that you already have what you need, take a breather, take a step back. I would bet that you will save a lot of money by getting off social media for a bit of time. Okay, number five is to avoid places where you tend to overspend. And in our family, mine is Target and my husband's is Costco. And he'll come back from Costco and I'm like, what did you, why did you buy this? We don't need this, we don't even eat this food. But my husband is, he said I could tell you this. <laughs> I could tell the world this on YouTube, that if it's on sale at Costco, he automatically feels like he needs to buy it. And even though logically he might know it's not a great deal, just 
they get it. And that's probably why they do that because we can't leave Costco without spending three or $400. And some of it are things that we legitimately need. Half of the other things we came home with were things that we didn't need. And so it's gonna be hard for us to avoid Costco. And you know, a lot of times we need to go to Target to get daily household items. But if you find yourself overspending when you walk in there, I always joke that when you go to Target, Target tells you what you need. You don't tell Target what you need. You know, it's kind of like home goods. Like it will show you what to bring home with you. So go there with a list and stick to it. This is sort of basics. And this also can work with websites. I know I sometimes will get lost on like the Zara app on my phone and just flicking through, adding things to my cart, checking out, they make it so easy. My credit card's already saved in there. If you find yourself doing that too much, delete the app off your phone. Not that you'll never re-download it, but unsubscribe from those emails. Just move the temptation away so you're not always on there shopping. Okay, this next one is another one that is easier said than done. And I feel like we've had a lot of practice with this and that is being okay with delayed gratification. And so I mentioned that my husband and I were in law school and then before law school, we did our undergrads. I got married just out of my freshman year of college. So we had been married, so we were married for our college years and then postgraduate work for law school. So those, it was about six years of being very poor. <laughs> no easier way to say it. We did not have very much money and we had our first son while um, between undergrad and law school. We had real life bills and not very much money. And so we learned to live on very little. And while I would never want to go back to that time, I kind of look back with it with fondness and like, oh, well, we were so young and we were trying so hard. And you know, I'm proud of that self that we, I'm getting emotional. Wow. Ooh, I don't, I cry like twice a year. So I'm finding it odd that I'm feeling emotional, but. It was a hard time. And if you've ever not had very much money, you might know those feelings. And, you know, we were trying to better our lives. We were in school to be able to make more money and be more financially secure, but we had to really sacrifice and it was hard. And we tried to avoid loans as much as we could. And it was a hard time, but we tried, we did without, we did without so many things. We, this wasn't that long ago. I mean, my son was born in 2010 and I didn't have a cell phone. That wasn't, you know, people had cell phones then. And cause I had had one and then we couldn't afford for me to have one. And there was a time when we only had one vehicle that we shared. People looked at us like we were crazy. Like, how can you not have a cell phone? How come you only have one vehicle? And it was because we knew that if we lived this way now, we would be so much better off in the future having not overspent and gotten into too much debt. And I love, back to Dave Ramsey, he says, live like no one else so later you can live and give like no one else. Wow, I'm finding myself very tearful. Um, it's okay to wait. We went six years waiting and that seems like it's impossible. Um, it does now looking back at it. Let's say there's a purchase you wanna make. Even just sleep on it. Don't make it, don't make that decision right now. Sleep till the next morning and then make the purchase and decide. And I think we live in this fall mode, like, well, what if it sells out? Then you can find it on Poshmark. You can find that item on Craigslist or you'll find something else better in two years. Because how much, how often do we always want something new? So don't get rid of that fear of missing out mindset. There will always be things for you to buy, I promise. If you can go a day, go a week, go a month without purchasing that. Go a year without making it that big purchase and, and stretch yourself because ultimately you'll be in a much better financial position if you wait and you hold off and you think about it. And it's okay if you still make that decision and purchase that thing. It's, I'm not saying I don't, I buy lots of things, but I take my time, I research it, I sleep on it. I don't just jump into rash decisions most of the time, you know, I'm not perfect. Take a breather. Really consider it. Be okay being uncomfortable and that you want that thing and you want that car or you want that vacation or whatever it is. It will still be there. You can still do that thing.
back to this that Dave Ramsey comment. So live like no one else so later you can live and give like no one else. And I promise you, if you make yourself be more financially secure, you will have the opportunity to give to others way more than if you were in lots of debt, drowning, not knowing where your money is going. It's hard to be generous when you don't have money to be generous with. And when you've taken care of your finances for your household, you are able to help others and give to others. And that's a wonderful feeling to know that your home is taken care of and that then you can bless and give to others. So I love that Dave Ramsey quote. It's really powerful and got me all teary for, I, I had to come back to talking about it. The seventh and final tip I have is, is as your income increases, do not increase your lifestyle to match. And as I mentioned, we went from being in law school to out of law school. And with that comes a substantial income increase from having very little income to a lot higher income. And whatever that field is for you, or let's say you get an amazing bonus, or let's say you get a raise or whatever it is, it's tempting to want to now spend at that higher level. You have that much more coming in, you now can afford those. I wanna challenge you to, the next time you get an increase or a bonus or found money or something, keep living at that level you were before and don't increase. And with that delta, save it, put it away, invest it, do something else with it other than you know, eat out more and travel more because that's what's the more fun thing to do. I'm not saying you never increase it because we do not live how we lived when we were in law school. I have a cell phone, we have two cars. It's not that you're never gonna increase your lifestyle, but don't jump right to the same level. Always live on less than you make, live beneath your means. And I promise you having extra money in the bank will feel better than any purchase that you can make. Money is here to serve us. Money is here to pay for the things that make us happy and to help others. It's not meant to just pile up in our bank account. I'm not saying that. We are meant to eventually spend a portion of what we make, but don't spend all that you make. So I hope that these seven tips were helpful. I'm not meant to be preaching at you. I'm not an expert. I'm not a CPA or some financial expert but I've had some life experience and we've been able to successfully save money and I'm hoping that we can even do better. I'm hoping to be better at budgeting. That's why I put budgeting number one because that's the one I hate the most. I hate doing it. I hope these tips were helpful. I hope these inspired you. If you have any tips for how you save money, please, please, please share in the comments and help other viewers. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe. I'm almost to a thousand subscribers. That was my goal for 2021. It's now my January 2022 goal. I don't usually do finance videos. If you like this kind of video, let me know and I'm happy to do more. And I will catch you in my next video. Bye-bye.